Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, today's date, it is January 10th of 2019. This is going to be short. Uh, it's going to be political, so you may just want to stop watching this video. <clears throat> but I am going to keep it short. Uh, Trump's talking about declaring a national emergency because of the uh, refugees who are coming to our southern borders to find employment or join their families here in the United States or to escape uh, persecution and danger in their home countries or whatever. Uh, this has been going on it's going on here now, and it's going on around the world, and the nations of the world, including the United States, have agreed that uh, all nations uh, should do what they can to allow people to uh, come to their borders and request asylum or assistance if they are being persecuted and there are certain, you know, conditions or whatever. You, you're you not supposed to, I don't know the details, but you're not supposed to, just, to you know, sell your business in uh, Mexico or Nicaragua or something and uh, come up to the border and say, I, I want to come into whatever country, United States. I want to come to the United States and live here and... Uh, start my business here or whatever. It's supposed to be for asylum, you know. I mean, a person can do that. You can apply to come into the United States and whatever. But people who are running, fleeing from terrible conditions, economic conditions or religious persecution, all types of different things are internationally, it's been agreed by the United States too. I know a lot of people hate the United Nations and hate international law or whatever, but it's internationally agreed that uh, nations are supposed to uh, be open to letting people come into the country and give them asylum if they're, you know. So, so we've had <laughs> tons of people coming into the United States forever. My, uh, of course, my, I think my family's, I, I'm thinking they came through Ellis Island, you know, through that, not, not across the, well, I know they didn't come across the southern border, but still, my uh, family came from County Cork in Ireland, I'm guessing because of the Irish famine and uh, problems over there, and uh, Slotman's came from Germany, I'm guessing because of the unstable conditions in you know, when they came over a long time ago, the United States is a nation of immigrants, uh, basically. Uh, now it comes, you know, so we've had this problem for a long time. Now, Donald Trump wants his way. He said in the past, uh, which... He should be removed from as president just for saying it or for maybe not saying it, but for thinking it or for trying to act. He said in the past that the Constitution gets in his way, that uh, uh, he shouldn't, you know, and he's swore an oath. Everybody has sworn an oath, you know, protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. He swore the oath. The senator swore the oath. Uh, House of Representatives, uh, police officers military, everybody protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. Nobody swears an oath to, you know, protect and defend uh, the President of the United States or anything else. You swear an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. Um, so, you know, Trump wants his way. By the way, when the United States was set up, and it, the Constitution still is set up that way, 
But when the Constitution was set up, when our founding fathers set it up, it was uh, intended that the Congress of the United States, the representatives of the people, the United States is a republic, uh, we elect people. It's also democracy, by the way. You have some right-wing people will say, if you say the United States is a democracy, it's not a democracy, it's a republic, you know, because democracy sounds like Democrats and republic sounds like Republican, you know. Oh, God. But uh, it was intended that the Congress would be the preemptive, strong uh, branch of the government. Not that the president would, because we had overthrown a king and we were, our founding fathers were very suspicious and fr afraid of a strong, you know, strong man leader. But we turned out great because we, our first president was George Washington. We couldn't have asked for him. We were really lucky. Couldn't have asked for a better man. But it was intended that Congress was, you know, Congress would, con Congress would decide to declare war. Congress would uh, uh, decide uh, who we had diplomatic relations with, Congress would uh, give the money out, who gets paid, you know, all that, everything. But it was Congress was decided, it was uh, supposed to be, and for a while it was, but gradually the executive branch, the presidency, has become over, you know, time, and it's sort of understandable. But now what you have, you know, and you've, Naturally, you have to have a president who, and especially in, in the modern times, who can respond to emergency situations. Not that refugees, you know, women and children and people coming to the borders, you know, looking for that shining torch, you know, send me your tired your refuge, you know, Statue of Liberty, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so this thing of now, the president is going to, well, of course, we don't know what he says something, he says things every day that are crazy, oh. and he changes his, he lies every day, and he changes his opinion every day, and then he'll say yesterday, he'll say something yesterday, and the next day he'll say, no, I never said that, and it's, I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is not the 1800s. We have video, you know. Um, so now this thing of declaring a national emergency, the president should, we need the president, of course, to have the ability, if there really is a national emergency of some sort, we need him to have that ability. And Congress understands that, and the Supreme Court, I'm sure, understands that also which is we have uh, three branches of government here. None of them is preeminent over the other. We have three separate branches deliberately. Checks and balances on each other. We have an executive branch headed by the president. We have a legislative branch with a Congress. And we have the judicial branch with the Supreme Court and the other courts. Uh, so now we have a president who is who wants his way about a wall, and he just really now wants his way so that he can appear to be a strong man or or something. Uh, I mean, it's just he's a big baby. He's not smart. I think he suffers from mental illness. Uh, but. He's now, you know, <clears throat> been threatening that he's going to declare a national emergency. Nothing has changed along the border except we have fewer people coming for various reasons trying to get into the United States, actually. Uh, but even when a lot of people were trying to get, come across the border in the past years, it was not a national, you know, emergency. Our you know, our Border Patrol agents, they can handle the situation. You know, they can handle the situation. There isn't any situation that 
if, if they're not able to handle it and the National Guard needed to be called out or something, they, can, they could handle, you know, they could hand it back up if there was some type of a situation where they were needed. I can't think of that happening, but I guess it could, something could happen. It wouldn't be a national emergency. Uh, what is dangerous and scary is the fact that this president is threatening to use, he wants his way, he shut down the government of the United States. Uh, as a trying to turn it into a hostage situation um, in order to get his way. He's bound and determined that he's going to get his way. Uh, let me... Um, we just cannot allow, a, a, you know, there a period, there's, a, apparently there's going to be charges brought against, I mean, he, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but I can see that the president and the people around him, this president and the people around him have committed high crimes and misdemeanors. There's no question about it. Uh, he should be impeached, and I'm thinking he will be impeached. I think probably what he'll do is work out a deal, and he'll resign. Work out a deal where he doesn't go to prison, you know. I'll, I'll resign to save the nation the, the turmoil of all of this, and don't put, me in, uh, don't put me in prison, and don't put my daughter and my son or son-in-law in prison, and probably to hell with the rest of the people, you know, that fall around him, but for, if he tries this national emergency thing, which he's threatening, he's, and that's what he's doing, he's threatening that, <clears throat> it would be interesting, it wouldn't happen, and because you would also, you wouldn't get, you wouldn't get the Republicans to, enough of them to agree to it. It would be interesting, you know, there are, I'm sure, charges that are going to be brought against the President of the United States for uh, his conduct before the election and after he was elected as President. It would be interesting if he declared this national emergency uh, in order to get his way, that he's going to, uh, to hell with the Congress's ability and or with their responsibility for funding projects and controlling the purse strings or whatever, uh, I'm just going to uh, violate the Constitution of the United States and I'm going to use funds from the military or someplace else to build my wall or do whatever he wants to do. It would be interesting. Not going to happen, I understand. It'd be interesting if they would say, well, if from the Mueller investigation and everything, they'd say, you know, there isn't actually anything. People around him have all done these things, but we actually can't find anything that he actually did that we can really impeach him for. Of course, I've seen him and you've seen him. We've all seen him. But let's just say, for the sake of this conversation, uh, we can't find anything that he has done that actually... Uh, he could be removed from office, you know, be impeached and removed from office. Except he did, you know, violate the Constitution of the United States, tried to usurp power from the Congress of the United States, and for that uh, he should be removed and will be removed from office. That would be interesting. Not going to happen. Uh, but I would love for that to happen. Although I would really want the Mueller investigation to continue, come forward with whatever they have and present it and whatever. But let's take this thing of national, because some of you are out there, well, hell, you know, why can't he just declare a national emergency whenever he wants to declare a national emergency? Okay, um, Obama. What if Obama had said, uh, well, I can't pass... Uh, 
Affordable Health Care Act because the uh, Republicans are, uh, nope, none of the Republicans except two or three would vote for it. Uh, so there are X number of people in the United States who do not have health care. There are X number of people who die every day because they cannot, they couldn't get preventive health care. They couldn't go to the hospital or they wouldn't go to the hospital because they didn't, you know, he could list all these things and say, you know, this is a national emergency. Therefore, uh, I'm setting up uh, Affordable Health Care Act. That, you know, can you imagine uh, that would be improper for him to do that and wrong for him to do that because we have a Congress and we have a system of laws for doing the, you know, deciding those th things. Uh, what if... Um, Let's see. That was uh, Obama. What if? Uh, what could? What could some other president come up with for uh, as a national emergency? I think they all could come up with something. It wouldn't be a real national emergency, but they well. Let's say that. Um, we had the close election where it was uh, Al Gore versus Bush, and Florida <laughs> comes down to Florida and it's a mess. And actually, Al Gore eventually just said, "I'll go ahead and concede," uh, rather than put the nation through the trauma of the election not being decided and it coming down to the inauguration day. And uh, we don't know who the president of the United States is supposed to, you know, be. So Al Gore said, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll uh, concede that uh, the, I lost the election. Uh, what if uh, the president in that situation had said, okay, well, the election is unclear as to who won. So um, I'm declaring a national emergency and I will remain in office for two years until the next election. And then we can have, you know, an election that at, at that time, the election and then what, you know, uh, because it's a national emergency or what. I mean, the, the thing of using this national emergency, if Trump and I think I think there's a possibility. I I'm not sure whether Trump is stupid enough and crazy enough. I mean, he is stupid enough and crazy enough. I'm not sure if he is really willing to declare a national emergency in a, in this situation like this, uh, or not. Um, It's just, I, I'm a firm believer in uh, we have uh, Graham, Lindsey Graham, telling the president that he should declare a national emergency. It's just too bad. There should be some, you know, it should be the, he's in the Congress. It should be, the rest of the Congress should censor him, which is, you know, pass a resolution saying, you know, you have disgraced the Senate of the United States. You have uh, called upon the President of the United States to violate the oath of office that we've all taken. You know, that, that won't happen. But it, there should be some consequences. Uh, if Donald Trump does declare a national emergency because of because he wants his wall, which is what it boils down to, uh, it will have to go to the uh, It'll end up going to the Supreme Court. But uh, of course, what? Trump could do is declare the national emergency and uh, 
okay, I have now, I now have control of the military budget uh, rather than the Congress having control of it. And so there, I, for I have, uh, I've won. I have my, I told my people I was going to give them a wall. And uh, of course, he told his people that it, the Mexico was going to pay for it. But, you know, he doesn't day to day, you know. So uh, I've won. So I'm going to open up now the government. And uh, I won. I won. I had more people at my inauguration than Obama did. I won. I got more votes than uh, Hillary Clinton did. No, she got more votes. But, the you, you know, uh, Trump got the Electoral College votes, which you, that's what they count. Uh, and so he can, but what is going to happen then is it's going to, it would go to the United States Supreme Court. I think that the United States Supreme Court would, because they're sitting there and one of the agencies of the government and looking at the situation. And even though they, majority of them have been, you know, appointed by Republican presidents or whatever, I think they would look and say, oh, man, this is this is something we have to, and I think they would unanimously rule that the president does not have the authority to declare a national emergency to uh, for, the, for the reasons that he did. Of course, they'd be tempted, you know, they'd be sitting there thinking, well, the president should be able to call a national emergency if it was really a national emergency and if we rule nah, you know this is that we wouldn't want to sometime have something happen and the president be sitting there thinking well I'm not sure I can yes missiles are coming towards us or uh, aliens have landed you know spaceships all over the United States and I don't think I can declare a national emergency. I don't have to ask, con you know. They wouldn't want to do that, but I think what would happen is they would rule unanimously, no, Mr. President, you cannot declare, and this is null and void, you cannot declare an national emergency in a situation like this, and you can't move funds around. That's what Congress does. And... Uh, but by then, Trump will probably have been impeached, not on that, but on other, on other things. I don't see how Trump can continue when he is mentally not competent, and when he every day apparently commits, you know, commits crimes, and when everybody around him is committing crimes. Uh, so, anyway. I hope I hope Donald Trump does not declare a national emergency. He's stupid and he won't listen to the people around him. But what do you think? Do you think he will declare of course by the time this is posted, he may have declared a national emergency. I've uploaded videos before on some subject and you know, a couple of days later or the, even the next day, I upload the video, and then uh, something happens. There, and then I have people, I've had people leave comments. Well, no, you're wrong. Well, yeah, look at the date on, you know, look at the date when this is posted. <laughs> because that happened in the, um, well, I don't want to get into that, into that thing. But, so, what do you think? Should... President Trump in in this situation because of these refugees coming to the border should he be should he declare a national emergency I say no uh, I now now the question is not should the president ever be able to declare a national emergency well yes if there is a legitimate, real national emergency, we want the president to be able to respond immediately, you know, and Congress has passed some legislation. I don't think anybody's ever looked at it, but, you know, to that regard. Of course, they've made a mistake a few times in the past, like the Gulf of Tonkin situation back when, before we got involved in, 
I think we might have been involved a little bit in Vietnam, but we weren't in there big time. You know, uh, Congress passed a thing because of the Gulf of Tonkin situation, which we found out, I believe, later never really happened, but we thought that it had happened. In other words, you know, we our ship or whatever was not confronted by, we were in there, I forget what the details were now, it's so long ago, but it turns out that Congress passed a resolution or a thing saying, yes, okay, the president is has our authority to take action if because of this situation if he needs to. And of course the president went ahead and put us into Vietnam full, you know, and we had that situation because of the, you know, Gulf of Tonkin resolution. He could do all, he was doing all types of things saying, well, Congress, you know, uh, gave me the authority to do such and such because of the Gulf of Tonkin, you know, thing. So anyway, the question is, should the president be able in this situation to declare a national emergency? I say, no, he should not do that. So I can't ask you, well, what penalty, you know, what penalty should he suffer? Because there would be, you know, 39% of the people are going to say uh, he should be awarded a Nobel Peace, you know, Peace Prize for it. He should be, he should get a medal for it. And then you're going to have, you know, 60% of the people. I know that math doesn't matter, up. I don't think be 60% of the people saying he ought to go to prison, you know. So I won't, we won't try that. The question is, do you think Donald Trump should declare a national emergency because of the refugees? And I realize I'm using like the Republicans do, you know. Uh, if the Fox News was talked about this or the Fox News had a thing, they'd put it, uh, do you think the president of the United, do you think Trump, do you think the great President Trump should declare a national emergency because of the terrorist uh, MI-13 uh, criminals, rapists, murderers who are trying to bust their way in to you know to the United States? That's the way they would put the put the thing. I'm putting it in my way. Do you think the president of the United States should be able to declare a national emergency to? Uh, keep refugees from coming to the border of the United States. Uh, make your comments below. Thank you. I'm, by the way, turning off monetization or turning off the ability for me to make any money on this video because uh, <clears throat> YouTube advertisers are not going to want to advertise with something that's divisive and uh, has 39% of the people uh, upset. Uh, thank you very much for watching.